Hey what's up everyone, it's Chris Keppen, the artist behind an ethereal fire. Today we will be deep diving into a method of selection that is often underutilized but allows for near perfect hair and fabric extraction from the background. It also has the added bonus of being able to allow light to pass through both hair and fabric in a completely natural way. Let's go! That was cool! Today, we will be deep diving into alpha channel masking, which is a method of selection inside of Adobe's Photoshop. Alpha channel masking has a particular advantage over other methods of selection in Photoshop because it allows for the selection of translucent fabric and hair strands that would otherwise be extremely difficult to grab on your own. Today's tutorial will equip you with the ability to extract almost any subject on a dark background, even if the subject itself is darker than the background. Before we begin, I'd like to explain how a mask in Photoshop works because it's crucial to understanding how alpha channel masking can be used to our advantage. Masking in Photoshop allows us to erase and unerase a layer by using the paintbrush and using black to erase and white to unerase or to bring it back. This is also known as non-destructive editing. Layer masks are comprised of black and white, white being what is fully visible and black being what is fully erased. But what if something is gray or almost completely white? Then it is mostly selected. Now this is important to understand because we are going to use this to our advantage to be able to select part of something but still be able to see through it. Theoretically, you could paint a mask with black, white, and gray to perfectly select a subject, but that would be extremely time consuming. What if there was a way to use information that is already inside of Photoshop to create the black, white, and gray parts of a mask to extract the subject from the background? That is what we are going to do today using the channels section inside of Photoshop. Let's dive in. Just as all great Photoshop tutorials begin, we will start by duplicating the background layer. Next, we are going to click on the Channels section, which is located next to the Layers panel. There are four default channels, RGB, red, green, and blue. The RGB channel contains all of the information inside of your image, whereas the red, green, and blue channels contain a black and white representation of how much of that color is inside the image. If we duplicate one of these, we are able to make a new channel which does not affect the original image, but instead allows us to create a near-perfect mask from it. But wait, there's more. What if we were able to control the brightness values of the colors to make the subject stand out from the background even more before we started the channel mask? Let's add a black and white layer adjustment. Back inside of your layers section, go to the bottom middle and choose the little half black, half white circle. Click black and white. Find your properties window, which is typically located above the layers section. Mine is going to look a bit different because I have adjusted my workspace. From here, we will be able to adjust the luminance value or brightness of each color individually. While this can be a bit of trial and error, skin tone and hair is primarily composed of reds and yellows, so we know we can push those up. Subsequently, we know there is a lot of cyan and blue in the cloth that she is wearing, so I can raise those as well. Don't try to push the values too high where everything is pure white at this stage, because we will be doing that in a later stage with more care. Right now, your goal should be simply to create more contrast between the subject and the background. Hopping back to our channels tab, you will notice the red, green, and blue no longer change as we click on them. That is because the image is already black and white, and there is no color information for it to feed off of. With that in mind, duplicate any of the red, green, and blue channels. I'll choose red. Feel free to name the channel, but honestly, it's not something I bother with. Make sure the little eyeball is selected next to the duplicated channel and remove the eyeball from the RGB channel, which will hide all of the other layers except for the one that you're working on. What we are left with is a high contrast black and white image from which we can create a near perfect mask. Select your lasso tool and select anything you don't actually want inside of the image. In this case, I don't want this light. 
I also know I don't want this gold bounce. Fill this with pure black as we know we don't want any of it selected. Next, bring up the levels menu by hitting Command or Control L. Bring the endpoints towards each other which will make the light portions lighter and the dark portions darker. At this point, you should have some pure white and some pure black, but you do not want to over adjust this as you may lose detail in the hair. I do want to note that you can make selective adjustments by selecting using the lasso tool and then hitting Control or Command M for curves or Command or Control L for levels and then adjusting specific portions. However, you will be left with this extremely hard line which is very hard to get rid of in the mask. So let's do a better technique. In this next section, we will be utilizing the dodge and burn tools to selectively manipulate the mask's brightness levels. This will allow us to create near perfect hair selections while also achieving translucent fabric. Let's dive back in. Select the burn tool located directly above your pen tool and we are going to set the range to shadows. Then, press and hold on the burn tool and select your dodge tool and set the range to highlights. Then take a look at the sponge tool and forget it exists. Please note I am using a Wacom tablet equivalent and I have pen pressure for size turned on which allows for more control as I work on the mask. Another note, the exposure setting on the dodge and burn tool is just a fancy way of saying intensity, so don't get confused by the terminology. We will begin by burning the shadowy areas using an exposure value of around 10%. You don't want this to be too high because you can still burn the highlights if you're not careful. When going to work on sensitive areas such as the hair, there's actually a magic number and it is 3%. It will feel like you're not doing anything at first, but take your time and be patient. The way that this burns will actually slowly push the shadows away while leaving the midtones and highlights for you. In areas of strong white, you can use a higher exposure number and not be afraid of damaging the mask. This will be the one and only tutorial where I recommend using a soft round brush. Continue burning away the edges of the mask, leaving only the subject visible in various tones of gray. Fill any extra areas with black that you don't need, and once complete, switch to the Dodge tool. Now we are going to begin pushing the opaque sections of the image to pure white, starting with the body. Feel free to use a much more intensive exposure as the Dodge tool is somehow less touchy than the Burn tool. Don't ask me why. Avoid dodging any of the thinner cloth that is not touching the skin. However, for thicker cloth or areas that I know I want selected, I'm simply going to use a white paintbrush and just fill this in manually. It may seem tedious at first, but honestly, it becomes like a little coloring book where we use the dodge tool on the edges to not lift the shadows, and on the inside, you can just use a paintbrush to fill in the areas more efficiently. To speed up the process, you can hit B for brush, and O for dodge. When approaching the hair, I use an extremely light pen pressure with a still relatively intensive exposure value. This is something that's totally up to personal preference, but it's just what I've learned works best for me over the years. You will inevitably lift some of the shadows next to the hair. Do not worry about this, as you can always go back in with the burn tool and push it back down. This entire process, from start to finish, usually takes me about 15 minutes. When approaching the thin fabric, I am looking to create contrast, but I do not want to lift it to pure white. What I'm looking for is an extremely light gray, and in the areas that overlap each other, I'm looking for almost pure white. This allows for the illusion of translucence. The last and final step is to go back over all of the edges with a 3% burn tool and push the shadows back down where you may have lifted a little too much with the dodge tool. Now to see the reward for our effort, hold the control or command button and click the thumbnail of the duplicated channel, which will load it as a selection. Navigating back to your layers panel, select the duplicated background and click the mask button. You can now delete the black and white layer adjustment as it has served its purpose. To check your work, create a new layer right above your background layer and fill it with white. Because we photographed this on a dark background, white is going to reveal the most mistakes. Had you shot on a white background, which I do not recommend, you would be checking your work with a black layer here instead. With the layer mask selected, you can use the burn tool at 3% to remove any artifacting that you may see. 
for opaque areas that aren't perfect, I just go in with a textured paintbrush and fill them in by hand. Remember that imperfections in an image can actually contribute to the believability of a composite, so don't go too crazy here and go with what feels right to you. Now for the moment of truth. I'm going to place a curves adjustment layer behind the subject, and you'll notice as I change the luminance value and color, the light appears to seep through the fabric in a completely believable way. In a quick comparison to Adobe's Select Subject with Refine Edge applied, we can see a significant difference in the detail as well as the pass-through of light. Now, you may be thinking, Chris, didn't you say in the beginning of this that you could channel mask with something that is lighter or darker than the background? Also, didn't you kind of cheat by using someone who has bright red hair, allowing us to channel mask the reds way easier? Well, I'd like to invite you back to my next and follow-up tutorial to this one. We will be covering advanced channel masking techniques with inverted channels. We will also be able to talk about the advantages that people with darker hair have over those with lighter hair or colored hair. Thank you so much for joining me for today's tutorial. Subscribe for part two, and if you're interested in how I create my signature halos in all of my artwork, go ahead and click on wherever the hell this link appears on my screen. <laughs> I hope you're having a good day, and I will talk to you very soon.